minutes. Wait a couple of minutes uh, for everyone to see that we are live and ready to go. I can't believe that is the first, actually the fourth workshop that I'm doing and I'm actually a little bit nervous, um, stressed as we, could, uh, as we could say. So let's wait a little bit longer. Say hi as you jump on. Tell me where you are tuning in from. I'd love to know. Send me some hearts. Tell me if you can hear me and see me well. Um, and we'll start soon. Hey guys, say hi as you jump on. Tell me if you can hear me well, say hi. Hello Sylvie. Good afternoon. Okay, cool. Let's start. So welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, part two of uh, Reduce Stress to Boost Your Immunity, which is the fourth workshop um, that I'm doing, the fourth of a series. In the last three workshops, I covered I covered eating right to support your immune system. The second one, hey Karen. The second one was how digesting well supports your immunity. Um, and last Sunday was the first part of how reducing your stress levels actually boost your immunity. Um, so if you miss them, you know, just go on my YouTube channel to watch the replay. And actually, if you subscribe, you will get any new videos or replays automatically. So you don't need to, um, you know, actually um, wait for any Facebook release or anything. Or you go on to the... Hey, Nicola. Um, hey, Florian. Welcome, guys. Um, so you can go into the video section of my Facebook page um, if you prefer. All right, so for those who don't know me, I'm a nutrition and wellness coach. More specifically, I help busy women. So uh, Nicola, I help some men from time to time, but I have to say I work mainly with, uh, with females. So I help busy women find their happy weight uh, and keep it off, um, boost their energy, beat their cravings and bloating so that they can feel good and confident in their own skin. Um, so you might, you might be like, well, what does she mean by happy weight? Like, what does that actually mean? Well, that's, that's basically, I like to use this expression because this is basically um, the weight that you feel good in your mind with the weight that you feel kind of, you know, happy in your life with. And, um, you know, for me, weight gain is really, um, is really a symptom. So it's just, uh, you know, how we live, how we eat, how we think has a direct impact on, on our bodies um, and our mind, you know, on what we become and, um, and who we become. And um, as you might have seen in my stories yesterday night where I posted my apparel and, uh, you know, all the um, yummy stuff that we had that are not necessarily healthy, but hey, you know, it's all about balance. And, um, and so for me, any sustainable changes um, have to, you know, they have to work for you. So it's more a question of, you know, finding what is the right balance for you, because we are all unique, you're all different from me and, and so on. We are all beautifully unique. Um, so I'm all about making it simple, but yet sustainable and powerful for you so that you can create um, habits that you love, that are healthy um, and that you keep, you know, for life. Right. And, and obviously, uh, whatever habits you create are also good for your families or your partner or, you know, whatever is your um, family situation. But um, so my my approach and my background is very holistic. Um, I believe that body and mind are one. And that's why I have split this workshop in two parts. Last week, we um, kind of approached stress more from a, um, I guess, um, mind and lifestyle um, habit perspective. And today we are gonna tackle it more from, okay, um, you know, from like foods, herbs and drinks perspective. Um, and um, 
and for me that's that's basically how you know for any issues i believe um any health issues um it's the best way to tackle something and for some people don't get me wrong there would be very little to address um maybe you know great for them on the mind side of things so on the lifestyle habit side of things but there will be more um on you know other um, habits such as you know eating and drinking to address or this and versa and for some people they don't realize but actually we need to rebalance both um and uh and for this i like to uh i don't know if you guys know uh joe dispenser uh if you don't um you know go check it out um he's uh he he's amazing um and uh i guess my point here was to kind of just illustrate what he says about um the fact that you know the the body is the vehicle right the the body is is the vehicle of, of your mind in a way so for some reason you've taught your mind a certain thing and then in the practice in your day-to-day -day life it translated it in some habits that you have um, in terms of eating drinking sleeping and, and so on but that in itself has had um as anchored you know quite deeply in your in your body which in turn has created something in your mind so so basically it's you need to rewire both you know i mean it sounds complex but actually it's very simple actually well uh at least i'll make it simple for you <laughs> i'll make it simple for my clients but uh, i think it's um you know important to understand the mind-body connection, because it's only when you understand that, even at a superficial level, um, that you can, uh, you know, raise your awareness and then um, dig a little bit deeper, maybe on a couple of things that you feel are affecting you more specifically, and then um, and then you can understand better how your body works and and you can adjust um, as your life goes on, you know, as you have challenges in life. Um, understanding the principle of how the body works and then and then you're good um, to you know keep adjusting things along the way um, and uh, I'm also why I'm um, my approach is that holistic as well is it, it kind of followed you know what happened in my life in 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 some respect um, you know I started to um, address some of the things that I was um, experiencing more from a physical perspective. And then, you know, as the years went by, I realized that actually uh, what was left uh, was something a little bit deeper. And for me, that was more something to do with, you know, with the, with the mind, you know, mental health and, and mindset. So that's why I also qualified in NLP, kinesiology. Um, I really love, you know, a, a different approach, a Chinese um traditional Chinese medicine approach, um, but um, also timeline therapy and sports massage therapy, um, because I do massage for those who, uh, who don't know me as well, obviously at the moment, not so much. Um, and, and a few more um, qualifications that, I've, um, that I have that I combine as needed for the benefit of my clients. But this was not um, always the case. I worked in banking before um, for about 10 years in Paris and in London. And, um, and I changed career totally in 2012, like stress and healthy habits um, and uh, literally uh, no life, <laughs> no kind of like no social life, like very, you know, not, not much was going on in my personal life, really. I was working a lot, you know, one of those uh, work alcoholic um, and I'm still, or um, I am to some extent, but that was the, the main trigger. And at the time I was actually um, drinking a little bit. Um, I was uh, smoking a lot and um and you know basically my life was not balanced and um i realized that you know the the, the movie that i i had created so the i was the main actor of a movie that i did not want to play in anymore so i just said i decided to um you know to stop the movie and um and decided to become someone else um and that's how i changed career i went back to school literally to learn you know initially massage and then nutrition set up my um health clinic from scratch in london and then um i met my partner there uh, we decided to um 
sell everything and leave to Asia. Um, that was in 2018. Uh, we lived there for about a year and a half and we arrived in France uh, last October. So for a bit more than, uh, than six months. But um, anyway, what, what about you guys? Um, anyone can relate to anything that I've said? Um, anyone working maybe in the corporate world or um, anyone that was working in the corporate world and uh, that has uh, changed career since? Um, let me know in the comments. I love to know because it really, um, you know, the thing is who we are now and how we feel now is obviously a reflection of what has been going on before, right? Either in our body and or in our body or, or, or our mind. So, um, so that's uh, I would love for you to share in the comments if you've uh, if you can relate. Um, so, all right, that's enough for that bit. Um, here is what you will learn today. In a nutshell, you will discover the simple things that um, from food, drinks, and and her perspective. Um, you can um, do to reduce your stress level so that in turn you boost your immunity um, and you know I will keep it like simple um, no jargon um, and just you know practical and accessible for everyone um, so anyone really in your family or anyone that you know um, actually should know that stuff because it's very useful for, for, for the health um, so we'll learn, so you will learn why reducing stress um, boosts your immunity. Um, so basically the two first points, they have been covered um, in details last workshop. So I will fly over those ones, but still for the people that were, um, that have not watched, um, you know, the replay of last week, I will kind of like put things back into context, right? So why reducing stress boosts your immunity? why some of the current signs and symptoms that you have, um, that you might be experiencing, actually um, might be, you know, related to some kind of stress that you have actually not realized, not identified. Um, and then we'll be like, okay, what to do about it? You know, how can we get started? What can you get started actually today, right after the workshop? Something very simple again. And, uh, We'll, we'll identify what are what are those things um, that you can reduce, what are those things that you can increase, you know, focus on more. Um, and then finally, how are you going to put that into practice? Because I'm a big fan of, you know, for me, knowledge is, is great. I, I, I don't fully agree with knowledge is power because um, knowledge is actually not everything um, in the sense of if you have the knowledge but you don't do anything about it, it's not that powerful, is it? Um, but if you have the knowledge, even if it's, you know, not um, very deep, but whatever knowledge you have, if you implement it, amazing. And if you keep it up and, um, you know, really kind of like um, create habits and embody the change and, you know, create the habits and do it, you know, as you brush your teeth, that's really cool. So even if it's if it's not a lot and you will see that um, you know if you you know if you retain like a couple of things from the workshop today that will already be amazing okay so no pressure if there is too much detail at some point just you know register what um, what you can what you feel is most relevant and easier for you to put in place right after the workshop okay so before we dive in I have a special announcement to make um, I will soon be launching a three weeks um, online program, uh, a group program for women. And that will be on Facebook. Um, so that will be via a private Facebook group. Um, and so if you are a woman and you want to get leaner, energized, reduce cravings, reduce bloatings, and just, you know, feel better and more confident in your own skin, then that might be the right place for you. In which case, um, I um, I would like to, um, so this will include a mind and body approach, right? I mean, um, I guess you've understood how um, how I work. Um, so it means that you will also understand why some of the things maybe that you've tried before have not worked. Um, so if you want to know more about the details, um, join my waiting list. All you have to do for this 
is sign up to my uh, newsletter. So on, um, so I will put the link of my website, but basically just sign up to my newsletter. And if you sign up now, then I will know that it's definitely because you are directly interested um, in learning more. Give me one second and I will post that in the comments. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Karen. I've just seen your comments. I will read it shortly. So, um, so I've just shared um, the link of where you can register to my uh, newsletter. Um, and be the first to know about the dates. So anyone who um, is attending the workshop right now or anyone who watched the replay, um, you know, can um, obviously join um, the waiting list and you guys will be the first to know about it. Um, I'm glad that you can uh, that you can relate, uh, Karen. And uh, yeah, you've you've changed. Right, you had you took a different life path. I will read that in details later. Thank you so much for for sharing that because you know it's always helpful for people who are attending the workshop who are a little bit shy or people you know doing the replay that um, you know that that might relate with you um, on some on some respect. So thank you so much for that. All right, so that was for the announcement. Um, so let me know either in the comments here or um, you know sign up to my newsletter directly um, to have the dates. All right, so let's get started. So why chronic stress cannot coexist with strong immunity? Or why you need to reduce stress to boost your immunity. So in a nutshell, being stressed suppress your immune system. Why? Because the body has to make a choice. Um, and it will send energy where it's needed the most. That's the fundamental principle. It's to the first, um, the master goal of the body is to protect you and save your life. So anything else that is more not as important as that will be disregarded um, from your body's perspective. So, um, so how does that relate to, um, you know, to immunity and all of that? Well, last week we explained that, um, you know, what was the immune system for and um, the, the, the two parts of the nervous system that, um, that um, we are interested in when it comes to um, the stress response. And so I won't repeat that in, in details, um, but, to recap, your immune system, this is your internal army. This is internal protection. Um, your nervous system, however, um, so there are two parts to the nervous system, um, as we explained last week, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the one that will be kicked in um, as soon as the body, not necessarily you, but as soon as the body perceives um, a state of stress. And, um, and then it will call on, you know, the hormonal axis in the brain that will release um, the stress hormone called cortisol. You might have heard that term before. Um, and so that's what we call the fight or flight response. Um, so when this happens, um, you know, the sympathetic nervous system is like, on alert, you know, um, and uh, for example, chronic insomnia is a great example of like um, things that are happening on a um, kind of like chronic basis, um, and you know, you kind of get along with it, um, but actually, it's like you know, you keep um, you keep pressing on uh, a button that you know on and off, and that actually over time, over weeks, over months, over years, maybe it creates, um, you know, a certain, num a certain number of uh, imbalances in your body. And then 10 years or 15 years old, maybe like just a year after you're like, what the hell is happening? I've got that now. I'm feeling like this now. Um, 
or even you know how how your mom felt actually was she stressed when she gave birth to you you know all the things that i discuss with my clients that i help them it's like a puzzle right it's um kind of um it's uh, it's very interesting to actually uh, uh understand um some of the things that uh, we did before or not and the effect that it has today anyway um so the parasympathetic one is the one that is more the recovery one you know the um the relaxed one who will we'll say and um neither or you know neither is good or bad um what i said um last week during the workshop is that um the key really is the balance we want a balance of sympathetic um, activity and parasympathetic activity and this is how you basically um, you know just keep the balance so so why is this relevant to immunity um, your immune system so let's say you have um, you know uh, indigestion or bad infection going on and you know you ate something a little bit funny and you you're running to the loo for you know diarrhea something like this um, and you are, um, you know, um, and a, a tiger or bear is running after you. Um, well, you know, what, what, where do you think all the energy of the body is going to go to? That's obviously, remember the, the, you know, the principle that I said earlier, the energy where will go where it's needed the most. So, um, and, and where it's a bit of an issue is that in the body, we have two protection systems. We have, um, the internal um protection system so that protects you from the internal threats such as a virus and that's your immune system dealing with that bit and then we have the one protecting the uh, us from the external threats and that is the adrenal system which requires tons of energy that's the one that if it's kicked in will be prioritized over anything um and so um yeah, so, so, so as long as your body um, is activating this one, it will literally shut down anything else or, or severely reduce the energy that is allocated to anything else um, in your body. Hence, um, you know, um, why you might feel some symptoms such as, I don't know, um, you know, when you feel stressed, you can't quite eat um, so well, or, you know, you can't quite drink, like you, you know, you feel like your stomach is getting a little bit tense, you know, um, and uh, your digestion is affected, um, you know, maybe you have, um, you know, bloating or things like this going on, uh, maybe you have, um, you know, you feel tense, so it will affect different, um, you know, um, body systems, um, in order to um, get you to focus on, well, you need to save your life first, right? So, and where is that coming from? Where is that fight or flight response coming from? Um, so, as I said last week, um, the way, the thing is, we have to understand that the way our body works has not changed since the Paleolithic times, um, that flight, uh, fight or flight response was there and, and will probably still be there but our environment will has changed is changing and will change um so this is more a question of um you know adjusting to um you know our like reducing our level of stress and managing those um stress levels to whatever our environment is um because it will kind of always be there but um at the time they had to you know um literally like protect their life when they wanted to get food and you know um and just um you know fight for their life and and and, and food and, and and so on so that's the mechanism that um the body has put in place um um since then um for us at the moment um it's more um you know anything um anything that the body perceives as stress um will kick in this sympathetic um you know response so that will be um you know the wi-fi that is on that will be the pollution that will be you not sleeping well that will be you not drinking enough water um that will be you um eating um you know some foods that are not right for you drinking too much alcohol eating too much sugar some of those things will um obviously more or less for some people um kick in that um or keep this stress response 
being on and on and on. Um, so, yeah, so I kind of, now it's point two, I kind of covered um, some of the, um, already some of the physio physiological effects of stress on mind and on body. Um, and I covered that at length uh, last week. But again, you know, share in the comments below if you've, um, you know, if you, you may experience, like if you've experienced weight gain, for example, um, like fat around the middle, like fat belly uh, is a typical one, a bad skin, you know, bloating, digestive issues, um, IBS, um, cramps, um, kind of um, uh, even, um, yeah, like back tension, um, cravings, uh, lack of energy, you know, mood swings, um, waking up in the middle of the night um, is, is definitely uh, one um, kind of colds and flus or like you, you, you catch everything that is around and is dragging on, um, PMS or other hormonal conditions that may, may, that may well come from there um, as well. So, um, so share, share below if you've, uh, if you've experienced any of this um, and how actually what would be interesting is what has worked for you if you've resolved that issue? What, what is the thing that was the main, uh, you know, um, helper, <laughs> I would say, for you? So, so yeah, so it's really, um, therefore, it's really important to find ways for you to reduce stress, to boost your immunity, okay? So how do we do that? Um, again, the key is all about balance. Um, the key is to find the balance, like reduce, um, you know, some from a food, um, herbs and drink perspective is to reduce some of these that um, lead to uh, a kind of a, a perceived situation of stress by your body and focus on the ones that are like stress reducing foods and drinks, uh, literally. Um, so, so it's the balance of that. Um, I will, so I will cover some of the foods and drinks that are, um, you know, to, to avoid, to eliminate or to reduce. Um, and I'm sure this, some of this will be actually quite familiar to you guys. Um, so I will move on quite quickly, but, um, I'm sure you all know that having, um, too much sugar, whether it is natural or refined, um, it is, um, it is a source of inflammation for you, um, you know, in, in, in your body. Um, I won't cover all the details, but it's definitely, it is actually perceived as a form of stress for your body because it will, um, you know, kick in a certain, um, a certain number of reactions that are um, opening the door to, you know, more inflammation, opening the door to um, some disease um, in your body, which again, you are probably not realizing uh, or want to realize until something really significant starts to bother you. Um, and um, so, yeah, so watch for uh, natural sugars as well, um, people. I um, very often my clients say, oh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm eating, you know, pretty healthy. And then when we um, discuss a little bit more and that, that I see their, you know, food dairy or that are, you know, for some that uh, like to cook when I see their recipes and stuff, I still see tons of sugar different sources, you know, coming in different ways. And um, so there are so many easy ways that you can actually um, reduce this. And, you know, and, and, and the way to really um, kind of, um, some people obviously feel that they are addicted with sugar. And this is, don't get me wrong, this is very addictive, but um, the best way um, really to um, come out of that is progressively reduce it. Um, still in a way that that works for you um and finding um something that 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 you like i had the example this week uh, of one of my clients that is uh you know um actually fairly stressed and um she has chocolate cravings not the good type of chocolate um and so so there is there is a deeper aspect of that situation that we need to address but um for the chocolate cravings the first thing that we started to do is actually relocate her um, um, her um, taste buds 
um, and get her to, well, actually, you know, um, try some dark chocolate, but that is just like 70% 70, uh, 70 chocolate. So it's still like massively sugary, right? But, um, but you know, little by little, and actually she's totally fine doing that. So it's just um, an example. Um, check, you know, check the labels. There is sugar literally everywhere. Sugar, dairy, gluten is sneaking in uh, everywhere. And even if you cook, I bet that there are still ways that you can reduce that. Anyway, um, so the other one is, you know, alcohol, obviously alcohol. Hey, Peggy, welcome. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so yeah, so alcohol, by the way, is considered, um, is considered by your body, like, you know, like sugar, um, in fact, so even if you drink something that it does not taste sugary, it is, um, actually that, but, but I guess I was more mentioning alcohol here from a, um, kind of, um, like smoking is, um, from a toxins perspective. So it's, this is how your body, um, will perceive it, how your liver will perceive it. Therefore, um, it will require energy to, uh, you know, from your body to deal with this. Um, and so an extra stress basically for source of stress for your body that you can, um, you know, once you are aware of it, that you can manage better. Um, and, you know, remember what I was saying in one of my previous workshops, I think that was the first one or first one, um, alcohol and, um, smoking, um, I'm all about balance guys. So don't, don't get me wrong here, but just know that they, um, that they depletes, uh, nutrients. Um, so yeah, including the ones, you know, for example, vitamin C is one of the first ones and, you know, magnesium, um, which is a key mineral that I'm going to talk about today. Um, so that's also why, you know, it will affect, you know, how you feel, um, um, well, especially for alcohol, how, you know, how you feel, how you behave when you drink or, you know, how it does affect your sleep or how you feel crap <laughs> the day after as well. Um, one um, that um, actually is pretty stressful for your body and um, that I hope um, if you're not drinking enough will be uh, drinking enough water will be on your list is you know drinking enough water um, is like not drinking enough water is actually um, is actually um, something quite stressful for your body um, eating too much uh, hey Mark welcome um, eating too much chocolate or like anything having too much stimulants um, in your in your diet in law in your lifestyle um, is um, is obviously you know keeping this kind of um, sympathetic nervous system on right um, so it's anything that is overstimulating so um, too much chocolate um, too much teas uh, too much like dark chocolate especially but uh, too much teas too much um, too much coffees, obviously, um, and actually alcohol um, is is actually stimulant and depressive. I mean, it's it's both. It's all a question of um, quantity. Again, I'm I'm all about balance. Dark chocolate is actually one of the stress reducing food, and we'll cover that. But but it's 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 the same for everything, you know. Um, um, if you tilt over um, and if you go into the excess, um, then this is where it, it becomes more of, a, more of an issue. So I'm flying away, um, you know, I'm flying over this quite quickly. Um, obviously, if you are stressed or if you feel that um, you might have, you know, some sign and symptoms of someone who is stressed who, or that, um, you know, your body might perceive this as, as a form of stress, then obviously um, limit um, coffees and um, definitely um, any sources of caffeine, coffee is only one, um, but will remain in your blood for a certain number of hours. So bear that in mind. Um, and obviously, um, I always suggest to kind of like stop having it around like midday, really, um, to be on the safe side. And yeah, so what to focus on to reduce stress. So um, what are the foods that are um, basically and the drinks that will calm you down, that will reduce your stress levels and that are therefore good for you in so many ways, right? 
Um, and we'll talk about the magnesium rich food. They are gonna be like the star of the day, let's say. So we will chat a little bit about magnesium. This is one of my, if there is a top three, um, top three thing, top three mineral, top three supplements that I use um, in my life or you know when I work with clients, um, is very often magnesium actually. Um, and, and you will understand why. First of all, uh, magnesium um, is one of the, um, the electrolytes, um, one of the body's electrolytes. So think hydration and think that, you know, obviously your body needs a certain, um, you know, we are made of 70% of water. Therefore, your body needs tons of water to function. And that's way more than two liters. Well, actually that's kind of about two liters. Um, to perform, you know, its um, activities. Um, but there are so many things during the day um, that we do, that we eat, drink or whatever, that, um, you know, dehydrate ourselves. Therefore, we need to replenish even more. That means drinking more than two liters a day, especially at the moment where we, you know, we have to say we move a little bit less. Um, so think hydration, but also um, in the body, it is actually the fourth uh, most abundant mineral. And this is uh, a cofactor, literally, um, in more than 300 metabolic reactions. So that means that a certain number of things cannot happen, literally cannot happen, or start to really happen in a clunky way um, in the body if you... Um, have magnesium deficiency, let's call it like this. And trust me, uh, lots of people are. Uh, why? Because it's also depleted very, very easily um, as soon as your body perceives a situation of stress. So whether you're conscious of it or not, it will deplete your levels, uh, levels of magnesium. So some of the metabolic reactions that I was referring to are energy prediction, um, but also uh, muscle and um, nervous system function, uh, blood, uh, blue, um, blood uh, glucose control, uh, blood, blood glucose control, blood pressure, um, and so many others. So for me, this is um, this is this is a key. This is really a key mineral. And the and the thing is, even if you have a healthy diet it's definitely possible for you to be actually magnesium deficient. Um, so where can you find magnesium? You can find magnesium in food, obviously, that's what we're going to cover. Um, you can find magnesium in supplements um, and you can find magnesium in where well, you can actually use um, magnesium um, on your skin. So in a transdermal way, um, you might be aware that everything that you put on your skin um, end up in your bloodstream. And that's why, you know, we always obviously need to be careful as what, you know, the type of cosmetics or products that we use at home or on our skin for that reason. Um, so actually, I'm just going to bring a few here that I've put aside for you. Okay, I'll cover the food just a bit after. So... I always say food first, but for the purpose of the workshop, I'm actually just going to cover those small bits first. So in terms of, um, you know, how can you get it, um, you know, in a more therapeutic dosage, which I use very often with my clients because lots of them are actually magnesium deficient, um, is, you know, in the form of a, of a supplements. There are different forms of magnesium, guys. I won't have time to cover that, but um, be careful. Some of them are more, you know, um, for like people who have like constipation issues, um, you know, different type of um, forms with different type of, um, you know, issues. So, um, but just know that um, it's great to, to look into that. Um, you have also magnesium in more of a powder form. Um, I'm not so much into powder, but it's actually um, usually pretty efficient to have that in a powder or liquid form. Um, you can also increase your magnesium level by um, using a magnesium oil like this one. And there are plenty of brands that do it. I mean, this brand, Better You, is very good, um, but there are others. Um, 
and you can find that in you know a health shop or power pharmacy so you can actually find that pretty easily at the moment um but you can also use uh, Epsom salts. Well, I'm just checking the time. You can also use uh, Epsom salts. So these are the things that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that some people don't necessarily like to have, um, you know, too much supplements and stuff. And um, don't get me wrong, diet first. But these are some of the things that you can, um, that you can use. Again, think holistically, you know, think that um, it's the combination of different little things that can make um that can make the difference and especially sometimes you know you've tried things and it has worked but you know for some reason it does not work so much um anymore so it's good to um to rotate and and try um obviously different things but what works best for you so let's cover the foods does anyone know please share with me in the comments does anyone know well First of all, does anyone use um, any magnesium supplements or um, any magnesium oil or um, does anyone take a bath um, with Epsom salts to just chill and relax with some essential oil? Um, does anyone of you guys use some of these um, things to already reduce your stress levels? Share with me in uh, in the comments, and that's very useful for others. Remember, um, you know we are in this together. Anything that you can share here is very helpful for for others. It's not just uh, me, um, you know, sharing the information here. Um, I'm very aware that this is not going to be like super exhaustive, right? I cannot possibly cover everything, so don't hesitate to share in the comments. And now we are going to tackle the food. So the magnet, the the well, the stress reducing foods uh, and more specifically the foods rich in magnesium um, and um, so does anyone know what are those foods I'm gonna cover only the top 10 right again um, yes yeah, supplements for muscle issue yeah okay Karen yeah definitely which form of magnesium are you using um, so anyone knows which foods are great to reduce stress which foods are high in magnesium any anyone has a clue um so while you share in the comments i will just grab a few going in the fridge to grab a few Aha, I forgot a very important one, the dark chocolate that I keep in the fridge because it's fat-based. Remember, keep everything um, like almonds, um, anything fat-based in, in the fridge. Um, you can just leave the coconut oil out. So anyone, anyone has shared, has any clue about, let's check the comments okay all right so dark chocolate is one so this one is 85 i mean sometimes i have 90 but it's a little bit um it's a little bit strong um so dark chocolate actually um uh, is not on top of the list of the top 10 okay um but is um but is a great source um again um you know it's not like half the tablet guys it's um just like two square is good and two square every day is okay um so we have avocado um one that is magnesium rich and obviously rich in so many other things right i mean all of what i'm covering now is not just rich in magnesium but um for the purpose of the workshop that's the start of the day we have almonds um we have banana so again banana natural sugar what did i say about the sugar earlier um i some people really love the banana and it's cheap and it's easy and um great and it has lots of benefits but um yeah don't abuse from it um it's okay it's, it's actually for some people it's actually inflammatory i mean it, in the sense that it, it can lead to um creating lots of mucus 
um, which is an inflammatory sign. So, um, so yeah, just in moderation. Um, here we have actually fermented um, fermented yogurt, um, almond yogurt. So I really like that. Um, so I found that in my local um, health shop. Um, and we have also like um, um, other, other forms that are um, quite rich in magnesium. So there is the kefir. I mean, this one is lemon because it was, there was a discount. I took it. Um, but, um, but the natural one is very good. So, um, you know, fermented, um, fermented yogurt preferably. Um, and kefir is one form of um, fermented um, yogurt. Um, we have, we have, here we have kale. So in terms of, so think leafy greens, basically. All the leafy greens are um, quite high in magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral. It's not like vitamin C, like we covered in the first two workshops that are, um, you know, um, water soluble. Um, but still remember, don't overcook your um, vegetables. You can actually eat kale raw um, if you cut it very small and you know, uh, kind of um, massage it in some coconut oil. I never do it, but uh, too lazy for that at the moment. Um, you have here, we have, so I'm using this um, sustainable bags. Um, we have bok choy, so that's another example. We have spinach, actually, spinach is on the top of the list. Um, for uh, magnesium rich foods. I think I've covered um, the, main, the main foods there. Um, so now let's cover, let's talk a little bit about the herbs um, and then we'll soon uh, move on to the next part. So um, one of the, you might have heard of ashwagandha or you might have heard of adaptogens, um, adaptogen herbs. So they are basically, let me know in the comments if you've heard of ashwagandha before or um, adaptogen herbs. So they basically, um, they basically um, adjust to your level of stress. They help you to cope with stress, they adapt. Um, so um, they will reduce, they will help you to cope with stress, they will boost your energy, but they, they won't overstimulate you, which is the whole point. Um, um, and um, so, so these are some of the things that sometimes I suggest to my clients, but I always think magnesium first, always, um, because it's good for the body in so many, you know, remember it's involved in more than 300 metabolic reactions. So therefore um, it does address lots of things, but um, ashwagandha for some people is great and you can take it over, you know, definitely um, over a few weeks and or, or, or a few months for some people, uh, like is magnesium. You have also um, holy uh, basil, or I think the other name is Tulsi, uh, probably. Does anyone know? Share with me in the comments, guys. Um, or if you have tried something else um, that I've not mentioned that really worked for you. Um, they, you can also um, find, um, especially if you have, um, you know, if you are feeling a little bit stressed slash anxious, um, you might have been um, suggested um, things like, you know, valerian or passion flowers, um, things like that. So, I do not advise you to actually take um, this um, single, but more as a synergistic blend. So um, often in a tincture, um, so in a liquid form, you will have some drops and they will probably mix, um, you know, passion flowers, um, you know, valerian, uh, lavender, chamomile, um, what else? Um, and a couple of other things that um, really are producing a nice effect, but without leaving you a bit groggy um, the day after. So, so, so again, this list is not exhaustive, guys. So share in the comments anything that um, that you know that has worked, or that you know that someone has tried that has worked. Um, in terms of drinks, well, that would be a derivative of of that, as in, for example, the chamomile tea. There is also uh, the kava tea. I've never tried. Um, but I've heard of it. But the first two are actually um, water for the reason that I've mentioned before. Um, filtered water, obviously. Um, and um, that's your reminder to drink some water. Go grab some water. Um, another one is coconut water. 
when I was living in Asia, that was um, obviously something that I was, well, it, you dehydrate so quickly. Um, but that was one thing that I was drinking on a regular basis because um, it does contain, um, you know, um, a few electrolytes. Um, but um, here, um, for example, in Europe, I would not uh, necessarily advise you to run and uh, um, get some coconut water because you're unlikely, well, you are likely to find it in a box. Um, therefore, that's really not the same and often quite sugary. So let's move on. I want you to take, grab a piece of paper, well, a pen and, and a piece of paper and um, take five minutes or two minutes, whatever you need to um, write down the things that, that, that I've discussed um, that you can do to reduce or... Um, you know, make a list of what you can reduce, make a list of what you can increase, you know, focus on um, following what I've, what I've mentioned. So take two minutes and do that. Um, remember what we discussed. So what can you reduce easily? What can you focus on a bit more just after the workshop? Pick one or two, no more. and more than happy for you to share in the comments. So pick one or two you would like to try. Are you guys ready? So talk to me, <laughs> what do you want? Um, what do you think you can easily reduce? You know, and things that you are probably already aware of. Um, and what is one thing maybe that you can um, do better or do a little bit more or focus on um, that can help? Share with me in the comments, guys. And that's helpful for the others. Um, so now that you've done that, let me know if you need a bit more time. Um, we will think about the simple steps that you can start taking right after the workshop, so very soon, um, in that you can start doing from today. Think simple. The more simple and easy um, you, um, you know, you tackle it, the more sustainable it will be, really. Um, so, and, and, and especially, you know, um, the intention is not obviously to overwhelm you and, and to kind of like, uh, um, you know, uh, give you the impression that, oh my God, there is all of this to do and I've listened to her other workshop and there is this to do and, and all of that. Um, it's really, um, you know, instead take one small step at a time, do it well, stick to it, keep doing it. And once it becomes, you know, a little bit of a, of a habit, then um, tackle something else on your list, okay? And that's why I'm getting you to do a list. Um, so that you can also refer back to it. Um, so now your little challenge. Uh, last week, I actually got the attendees to, um, to do this exercise as well. And, uh, and it does apply to, you know, part two, um, really. Oh, I can see, um, Sylvie, so you're, you're up for reducing alcohol and sugar and increased green vegetables. That's awesome. That's quite a lot though. How are you, what are you gonna start first? Because, you know, again, the idea is to not put too much on our shoulders, especially women, we are specialists of that. And to be like, okay, what's the most important? What's the thing that I can easily start with? Um, and Karen, alcohol and coffee and increase green leafy vegetables, yeah. Okay, cool. Well. That's, uh, and have Epsom salts bath. Um, again, that's quite a little bit, Karen. Um, what, what do you think, um, what do you want to start with first? Like, what can you start with today? Same question for, um, for Sylvie. Um, because I'm guessing that, you know, probably you're not gonna get um, leafy green vegetables this afternoon. It might be closed by then. Or if you have some at home, obviously that can be something that you can do for, for dinner tonight. So share with me, um, you know, what is the first thing that you're gonna do? And if you're like, uh-huh, that's the first thing that I wanna do and it's pretty easy, but um, uh, I need to do that bit first, as in 
what is that you need to maybe overcome or um, ditch <laughs> to be able to, um, to do that. Um, so what I usually, um, so the exercise that I got them to do, um, you know, last week, um, and obviously some of you um, on that workshop um, were already, um, were here last week as well. Um, but what I like to, um, to suggest is think of, pick three things, pick three things, one small, one medium size, one bigger. So the small thing that you can, so the first one is the small thing, and that's the small thing that um, I've told you to pick and start to do today. And uh, by the way, I would love for you to, for example, Karen, she said, oh, okay, well, uh, the thing that I'm going to do first is um, stop drinking coffee uh, or drink less coffee. And then for Sylvie, it's uh, reduce a little bit alcohol. Um, oh, you've started to reduce already. Okay, great. So, so that will be your um, small thing, or maybe for you, it's medium um, size thing. So, and then do it daily. Um, and, you know, keep being on your own back, basically, or come here for accountability and, and share with me how, how you guys are doing with this. That's the first one. The second thing is um, the medium bit size thing um, that I want you to pick and that you can do, um, you know, once a week. What is the thing that amongst what we said, you can definitely do less or more of once a week? Um, and something a bit bigger um, that you can do once a month. For some people, that will be the bath, because, um, well, for those who have a bath, um, because it takes, you know, taking the time to do it. If you have kids, taking, you know, finding the right moment to do it. So whatever it might be for you, um, the challenge here, the a little exercise is to get you to think for, for almost everything, actually, not just for that workshop, is... Um, you know, one small thing you can start today, one medium-sized thing that you can do once a week, and one bigger thing that you can do um, once a month. Okay, so what else? So yeah, share share with me um, in the comments what is, maybe if you already know the small, the medium size, and the bigger thing um, that I've just mentioned, and um, so this is now the end of a workshop. Before you go, uh, oh, hi, Mina, <laughs> you just joined. I'm literally uh, ending things up, but um, stay on for, for the last bit. And then obviously you can watch the replay. Hope you're well. Um, so remember to join my newsletter if you want to hear more about my uh, upcoming three weeks um, online group program that I will do in a private Facebook group that is for female who want to get leaner, who want to get a flatter tummy, get energized, um, reduce the cravings and the bloating and, and just feel, you know, feel better and, um, and feel, um, you know, more confident in your own skin. So that's, that's what's up. That's what will be coming. So um, subscribe to my newsletter. I've left um, the, uh, my website um, you know, details in the comments. So you just have to go and sign up. If you do that now, I will know that obviously you just signed up, you attended the workshop and, um, and will be first on the list first to hear about all the details. And, um, finally, um, don't hesitate this video. I think, uh, there are some useful stuff, simple, useful but yet powerful stuff that um, you could actually share with other people that could make a difference um, in their life and their well-being um, whether they are you know um, older or not and that's um, that's really useful okay woohoo it's now at the end I'm on time. I send you lots of love. Thank you so much for those attending. Hope you found it useful. And I send you lots of love and hugs. Bye.